I was thinking it might be fun to pull up another color reference, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm actually gonna keep it pretty close just to the photo reference um, and go kind of based on that. Um, but I'll use a little bit of some of the colors that I have up here, but I wanna warm them up, keep some of those oranges a little stronger. So do you guys have any questions as we move forward to the next part of the class here? Everybody's doing all right? Looks like a couple of people are still, still yeah, here. Okay. I, I did have a question, it's Jean again. Um, when you're working with an overcast uh, light, like a, or a sundown, overcast, sundown kind of light. Are the shadows long and weak? Or uh, I kind of get confused with my shadows. So a the sun or is overcast. Uh, yeah, overcast. It'll be very weak. I mean, they you may not, depending on how overcast, um, you may have no shadows. But they'll be longer rather than short. Short yeah, back. the lower the sun, the longer the shadows for sure. Okay. Yeah, uh, definitely. Midday, you have almost no shadows, you know, or they're just directly underneath. Um, yeah, when we're at OSA, I always have the students go out and look at the cars. And if the shadows are right underneath the car, then it's, you know, sun, it's noon or whatever, midday. Um, yeah, and as in the morning, they're long and then they get shorter till noon and then they start to get longer and longer and longer. Um, the lower the sun, the longer the shadows. Overcast will be softer edges on your shadows, generally. Um, a clear day will have crisp shadows. Warm light, cool shadows. Uh, cool light, warmer shadows. It's just how they appear. Cool um, light, warm shadows. Yep. Yep, cool light, warm shadow, warm light, cool shadow. That's just how they appear. So, you know, again, if you've ever been out at the beach and watching sunset and then you turn to walk away or turn to, you know, your shadows will appear almost blue on the white or gold sand or purple. If it's, a, you know, the golden hour. Got it. And then inversely, like kind of on overcast days or even kind of at high noon, sometimes you'll get warmer shadows appearing. It's not like they're red or hot ever, but they'll just be slightly warmer. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, let's get back to the easel. All right, so you can see I've got my... Uh, I've got the, um, I've done the subtractive painting, just did oils, the same, basically the colors. I think I used Payne's gray instead of blue in this. Um, I'm going to go ahead and move this a little bit closer since we've got a smaller painting. See if I can get it to where I can still move around a little bit. I even build a wish it wasn't so bouncy when I move this long neck of this thing around. Maybe I can move it here and does that look okay for you guys as a way to watch? Kind of a it's a pretty strong angle. Maybe I can straighten it out a little bit more. I just have to be careful not to step back. The tripod is literally right behind my feet. Are you guys okay to kind of not see the references very much? At this close angle, I don't really show you the, uh, the references great. too much. You could put it over on the right. Yeah, over there. Yeah, this uh, arm is way behind it. Oh, it's way behind, okay. It looks like it's right behind. <laughs> yeah, no, it's a good. Good foot by, or half a foot behind it. Okay. I'm just taking away my mixing area, which is okay. There's not 
a whole, whole lot of mixing in this one as it is right now. Is it on autofocus? Always, unfortunately. That's the thing with these um, webcams versus my DSLR. It's not bad, is it? There's my shoulder getting wanting to go into focus. I'll have to kind of it's good. It's good. I'll have to paint at an angle. So I'll be standing to the left side of it, mixing directly in front of myself. And with this one, I actually kind of like some of these colors that I've got in the underpainting. So in this one, I may preserve some of that. Um, this one's being, like I said, more, it's kind of half, it's like a three quarter facelit with the light kind of raking through. And my favorite parts, my favorite parts are these, just the design of the shadows or the design of the light as it wraps up and over. And I think what's really going to help this one is to actually, because it's the light is kind of face lit, meaning behind us, behind me, over my left shoulder, I'm going to actually make the sky a little bit more on the gray side. And then these warms are going to even feel warmer. So in the other one, we kind of cooled down most of our warms. This one, I'm going to kind of celebrate those warms. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. All right. So I can do the same thing like I did last time. I can come in. I'm going to mix a darker dark. My paint's gray is actually not that dark of a color. I'm going to let a, a little bit of real dark show up. So I'm mixing my ultramarine my cadmium red medium kind of a warm bright red i don't hardly have any of it on there i should probably squeeze out a little more and i'm just going to give it a touch of the lemon yellow and that neutralizes that kind of ugly purple and makes it go towards dark so i've really got a nice nice dark here and i'm going to add a little more french ultramarine because again i'm going to kind of celebrate the warmth of the light hitting these objects so I'm going to go ahead and cool my shadows down. So let's bring in some of our structure a little stronger than we're seeing it right now. Maybe I can lower this so it's not looking down at it. Does that look like it's kind of looking straight across there? That's, yeah, that's better. All right, so again, I'll be reaching in front of it a little bit, and I apologize for that, but hopefully my shoulder doesn't get in the way very much. So I'm going to look to my darkest darks, and those are going to be in this shadow area here in the foreground, mostly underneath. There's a bush right here that's really dark. And I might kind of play it down a little bit so it doesn't take up as much space. And then I'm going to look to the base of my darks, okay? So the darkest dark where like a bush or a tree meets the ground or a rock meets the ground, the strongest shadow is right where they are. If you wanna test this, set up a single light in your room like a lamp or a single light bulb and put an object on your table, like a ball or an egg or a apple or whatever else and observe the shadow as it goes across your table or your countertop. And the strongest shadow is where your table and your object, let's say apple, or your apple sitting on the counter. So let's say my light is here, and then my countertop, my apple here, and where the apple is sitting on the surface, that where they connect is your strongest shadow. So I'm gonna, just going to use that same idea to give the base of my bushes. All right, and I've got a couple of them. Maybe a couple of these grasses are so tall that they're also casting nice strong shadows. Are you guys, is that reading at all? The darks getting a little darker, a little str yes. stronger?
And I could let it get a little bit lighter, but this area between here and here is pretty minor. It's a couple feet. So I'm not gonna worry too much about. And so this is a bluish black you're putting on? Yeah, I mixed it with ultra front or ultra, ultramarine blue, cab red medium, and a touch of lemon yellow to make a really dark. I don't have any good black on the pan, uh, canvas. But, and I also let the blue outweigh the others because I want cool shadows because I obviously have warm light. So I'm just getting my darkest darks established. Again, for me, my shadows give me my form and my structure. If you think of a, building a house, again, it's your, it's your, Foundation. Uh, foundation or yeah, or the, you know, the initial uh, boards that are going to go up and show you the shape of the house. Sorry, my brain is on the painting right now. Not that my vocabulary is ever that great. I'm going to go ahead and get a little bit lighter and a little bit cooler as I get into some of these shadows back in here. So I'm just grabbing up into these different purple grays that I have, mixing those in a little bit. I'm thinking I want to keep them cooler, so I'm looking to the, the cooler bluey grays that I have up here. You can see I'm just going to try to play up these bands of light. And that's going to give me my form, my, I hope. Wish I would have retained my initial piles like I did last time. I already let them go and started mixing all my colors into my same piles. So when I want to get back to my darks, it's going to be a little harder. I'll have to remix those colors. That's my mistake. It's a little greener than I want. So I'm going to add a little more blue into that. And also lighten that just a touch. And I'm just really thinking, okay, what's this painting about? It's about that light coming across. So how do I make it about that light? I make the shadows cooler. because so I want that light to appear nice and warm. This painting is uh, even fresher than the other ones, so my ability to do kind of scrubbing in is going to be greatly diminished. So I'm going to have to be very careful, knowing that the paint is reactivating really quickly. Michael, do you prefer to use uh, the darker ultramarine blues for the cool shadow or a darker dioxide purple for the cool shadows? Uh, the ultramarine blue generally. Okay. It's warmer. I mean, the dioxide purples are really, if, if you're going for vibrancy, dioxide purple is an amazing color, but it's so vibrant, I almost have a hard time controlling it. It's a strange one because it's so vibrant, like the color is so bright, but it's also a really weak color. It mixes down really fast when combined with other colors. So it's a color I don't use very much. I probably have the first tube I've ever bought of it still. Are there other 
darker purples than the dioxide? Uh, no, but the only problem is, is if, if I'm remembering the right color, it's quite transparent. Got it. Which can work in your shadows. It's sometimes nice to have nice transparent darks. Thank you. Yeah, no, keep asking questions. And you, maybe if you have a tube of it near you, maybe check, maybe I'm thinking of a different color. I don't use pre-mixed purples hardly ever. Oh, I'm just trying to, my thought process of transitioning paint colors to pastel colors. Oh, great. Yeah, well then, yeah, that would be, that's what it would be. And I, um, I love seeing when people bounce colors around, like why not put, you know, ultramarine and dioxide and, you know, other colors in your shadow. So you can have some energy and some interest within your shadow. You know yeah, I mean? I, yeah, because on the pastels, you, know, you actually kind of mix your colors on the paper rather than mixing your colors on the palette. Right. That's why I get such ugly blurs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know that's a difficult thing with those. Um, so maybe even try to put your colors side by side. And if you can, get up away from your painting as often as possible. You know, maybe you have to set a little egg timer that's every five, 10, 15 minutes to get oh. up and get away from your painting because you're not going to see it how most people are going to see it. Most people are going to see your painting from at least four feet away. And if you're sitting within a foot or, you know, even closer, it's not how it's meant to be observed. You. Yeah, that's the hard thing about having my tripod literally right behind me because now I'm trapped up against the palette and against the easel. But if you guys weren't here, I would be doing a dance of, you know, a couple brush strokes, stepping back and looking at it, a couple brush strokes, stepping back and looking at it. Um, and that's the only way I think it can be done. Like people who paint sitting down are both impressive and kind of dumbfound me. Like, I don't know how to do it. I don't know. I mean, you squint your eyes at it. That helps to blur and soften edges and to combine things. You can turn your head at it. Will help you see your colors differently. I have a rolling chair, so I just roll back. Just kick back, yeah. There you go. Yeah, because it's funny when I teach like in o at OSA, it's, you know, nine out of 10 of my students are sitting to paint. And I get it. I mean, they provide you long tables and everything else, but most of my students do that. And some of my favorite friends that I paint with will bring chairs and set up and it looks so relaxed, you know. One of my good buddies crosses his legs and kicks back and, you know, just sits back with his brush all extended. And, but I've not found that to be very conducive to how I do it. But again, that's the great, great thing is we all paint differently. All right. So you can kind of see I've, I've, I've reestablished kind of the structure, the structure a little bit better, hopefully. And these grasses kind of in the foreground are not so strong. So I'm going to bring in some of their cools, but they're not dark, dark, dark. I'm actually going to preserve some of it so that it ap appears. My lightest lights are going, besides the sky, are going to be right, right here. So this makes it right in this part. It's like a spotlight. So that's going to be kind of my focal point is right in here. So I'm kind of figuring out how do I do that? And what I, I guess I want to do is go ahead and rush forward and get to my sky because the sky is actually going to carve out 
all these shapes. And once I've got that sky established, then I'll be able to come back in and add the light that I want and be able to read it. But that gives me, again, my structure. There's no real dark, dark, darks in these trees as they're kind of being surrounded by light. They're also being hit by the light. Um, they're kind of a, they appear to be kind of a poplar tree, but with a light bark. I don't know if poplar trees have light bark. So I'm gonna mix some sky colors. And I want kind of a, a grayer color again, because my light's coming from here. Um, let's see, I kind of want, I'm gonna go ahead and mix Payne's gray into there. Nice, that's kind of what I was looking for. So that'll be kind of my color across there. And it's not gonna be too dis, too different from the last one in that it's going to be kind of this gradient of light um, coming across. We're up from here will be grayer, cooler, bluer. And then it's going to get a little pinker along this band and then down to a, a yellow, but it's not going to be the same strength of yellow because again, it's the light hitting the sky and yellowing it, warming it up. It's not coming from there. Does that make sense? So it's going to be kind of a cooler uh, yellow um, for me. So let's just get some of this blue on there. It's kind of a blue gray. But you can see already what it's doing as I use it to envelop the tree. All of a sudden, the tree becomes a little more special up there, doesn't it? So let's mix up some nice pink. But I want to keep the, I'm thinking cool colors, but maybe they don't appear so cool, but they're cooler than the warms in here that I want to play up. I'm gonna go ahead and splash a little bit of it up into here. Now I'm gonna think. Of going towards the yellows, and again, it's a very cool, creamy yellow that I'm is my gold color to get to. So I'm gonna warm up and lighten some of these pinks. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and not clean my brush. I'm gonna let some of that color contaminate it a little bit that's on my brush. I wiped it off, but I didn't clean it because I don't want a super yellow. You don't want it to be too, too, too hot. Mark and Carol wet. You're all wet. I'm going to let the color get a little bit yellower, but I'm also going to take it towards peach a little bit as I get towards the horizon. I, that's just a personal preference. Maybe it's not a good idea, actually, because if I want to play up the oranges that are on the tops, a peach may not be my best choice. I got to think about that for a second. Maybe let's see what happens. So Let it go on the, just a touch. On the camera, the, 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 the lemon, I mean, the yellow that you're painting now looks extremely extremely bright compared to the underlying. Okay. Yeah, and it really it, is. It, the, sky. the sky is, is it, definitely going to get, the sky is definitely lighter than the trees. I'm so. just wondering um, 
how much of this high contrast is the camera and how much is re what's really happening there? Probably it's being pushed on the camera. Um, but it, I mean, oh, and do I have it on, have I pinned it or whatever? Um, let me make it so it stays here. Okay, it is. All right, so it's staying on me when other people talk. So I'm trying to make a slightly greener yellow as it gets towards the horizon. I have to get lighter with it. And you can see again, I'm just kind of doing color spots to test if this is a good idea, if these colors work together. Yeah, no, I think it's reading pretty close on the monitor. Because I'll come through and lighten this up a lot too, um, and then some of the other areas after I get the sky. But the sky is going to give me, you know, I'm looking to get that big shape back. And just a touch of paint thinner to my brush. Maybe I'm going to take this area along the horizon a little more towards gray. I'm not liking the, I'm not loving what I have going right now. So I'm mixing a little bit of the pink that I have in the sky with a touch of green because green should really make the oranges read nicely. So it's kind of interesting to think a little bit of green in the sky to make the warms, the reds and the oranges, but it's barely green. It's, you know, almost just a, very, very, very gray green. Let's see if we can get away with it. Again, you can still see it's just color spots. It's going to be barely noticeable that the transition from the yellow to the greener yellow at the horizon, but I'm hoping that that helps me to show and make the, trans, the uh, glowy parts that much stronger. This paint's nice and thick. I'm not doing the scrubbing like I did in the last one. This is going to have a more impressionistic brush stroke feel to it. Just kind of sneaking up on my shapes. As I slowly blend those colors up.
Yeah, and beginning to see the forms of these trees kind of start to uh, come to life a little bit, hopefully. I'll sneak in and carve out these shapes in more interesting ways as I progress with the painting. Right now, again, big to small. I'm just looking for my big shapes. <laughs> Sorry, kicked my tripod. I was trying to step back to see what I've actually done. What kind of damage am I doing to this poor painting? It's like my favorite part is carving out the little shapes. Probably already know that. Most interesting shapes and edges come about by just where we put our brush strokes beside each other. So, you know, just constantly thinking of where two brush stroke edges come together that creates the shape. So what do you think? I mean, I know these need to be cut up and carved into little pieces, but can really feel that warmth. I mean, maybe that's too warm. It is appearing more red than it is on the monitor, but it's really quite, I mean, than it is on the palette, but it's really quite red. It looks spectacular. Thank you. It, it's gorgeous, Michael. Um, I do have to leave. <laughs> Okay, yeah, I, yeah, almost noon. I appreciate your uh, tuning in. We'll see you hopefully in a week. And I can't this wait. To see. Fabulous painting. Thank you, Michael. Can't wait to see what you come up with. Okay. I'll be working hard at it. Thank you. No, you will. Bye, All everybody. Right. Bye. I'm going to go ahead and bring in some of my warm lights. I'm going to grab warmth so i took my warm yellow i've got a cool yellow and a warm yellow i'm thinking the warm yellow this yellow is actually just a mixture of uh, it's a it it's me cleaning my palette so that's not indian yellow or cad yellow but it's warm it's a warm yellow so i know that'll work i'll let it lean towards green just a touch i'll go ahead and bring in a little white just because i want it to be slightly lighter but maybe not that light
All right, so we've got this really beautiful light ray coming in. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put it in there. It's not reading, it's really warm on there. Camera's having a hard time seeing the value and the warmth at the same time. And I have a couple of different rays of light coming in, but nothing as strong as that. That's the big one. That's the strong one. So I want to play it up, make sure it's special. It's hitting these bushes as it rakes across the landscape. And it's going to go ahead and move up that tree. I'm just, again, I'm thinking of the light rolling across and moving up that tree. This, in the foreground, there's a bush that's mostly in the shadow, so that kind of silhouettes across the front of it. interesting having just that nothing else being blasted by that light it feels so crazy and strong so let's go ahead and start lighting up some of the others but that is the strongest one so the others i can keep some of that color going but i'm going to go ahead and mix a little green and to the red so that it's not quite as bright or green into the orange I do see on the monitor that this is so bright that it appears to be like a hole, like it's poking through to the sky. Um, so maybe I'm going to red that up a little bit because it's not reading the way I want it to. Let's add a little more reddish, orange to it, to the base of it at least. Got this light kind of sneaking. This is another bush in the foreground that's cast you know that's in it's its silhouette but little bits of the light from behind it are poking through
and I'll come through and just like I was doing with the sky and I'm going to do, I'm going to come back and I'll refine these shapes. It's not so blocky. Right now it feels very geometric and everything else. But what I'm doing is I'm testing. You know, that's the great thing about oils. You can put them on. You don't have to like finish a tree before you move on to the next one. You can test those colors, test those shapes and see, do they in fact play nicely together? Do they read together? Even though maybe I think it reads in my photo, a lot of times when I get it onto the canvas, it's not doing what I thought it was going to do. It's funny that sometimes to make it feel more like your photo, you have to paint it unlike your photo. So that's where it's important just to say, what is the intent? Why did I choose to paint this? And it's about that light. And after I get these trees carved out and stuff, I'll want to do some of the same up there because, again, that same light is hitting them. Now, what are the big shapes? What do I need to retain? And I'll soften those transitions as well into the shadows, but not yet. Still just kind of squinting my eyes at it and testing. Now I'm thinking some of these half light shadow or half light areas here. So let's just make sure they're not as strong as the other band of light. And the truth is, I don't actually know why it's not as strong but I like it. I like that being the focus. Again, I like that spotlight kind of effect. So I want to retain it. Bring some of that warmth down into the foreground, but I want to keep it also pretty grayed down, pretty neutralized. It's like somehow it's a diffused light. I don't know if there's a tree that's blocking and just letting little passages of light through. And when I get to the detail, there's these nice little wispy grasses that are catching on the light there. But I, I don't want to paint them in now because I don't want to be painting around them for the rest of my painting. Cool. I think uh, it's noon, and I think that's an okay spot to stop. Um, do you kind of understand what I was kind of chasing? And then I'll come back in. I'll keep picking up my sky colors and carving in here and making this because it's actually they're really quite wispy. I, I again, I think they're poplar trees. I'm not positive, um, but there's a lot of air through them, and I like that. So I want to push that, and that'll be you know difficult to do sky holes without letting them be too punchy. Just notice that the sky holes are a little darker than the sky generally. So I can use that. Um, I'll carve in more interesting shapes here. And uh, yeah, just try to figure out what I've ruined <laughs> and what I can bring back. And 
because the poplar trees are further in the distance, are you going to lighten and cool their color just slightly? You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do this instead. I'll get rid of this as soon as this class is over, but. I'm going to bring them back in front of these trees that I've been carving out. <laughs> is that loud? <laughs> So they'll actually come forward. So that, that'll oh. be the part that's up here will I'll retain some of that kind of glowiness, but down here I'll have to put them over the top a little bit. But the good thing about poplars is they don't start growing until they're pretty high up for the most part. They have some spindly branches down low. Okay. Yeah, good question. Amazing, so beautiful. Yeah, that, that adds a whole other you know level of complexity yeah nice nice, nice focal focal point it really is that stage lighting can be such a fun and useful tool sometimes um you know but it's hard to not let it overdo itself and it's interesting so many of the artists i like will leave their brush strokes like that very um Contrast hard edges yeah, you know, and then you just transition the colors and that's fine and that's great. So however you want to do it, um, I'll probably have sort of a combination of them as I kind of come in and soften down some of the transitions. Again, a big part of it's going to be in the time consuming part and the part I can't do from the angle I'm reaching across um, without kicking my tripod is going to be to just carve out those those tree shapes a little bit more and just being patient and letting this painting Tell me, because I could really see, you know, some beautiful purples and gray greens in the shadows. Um, mauves would really look wonderful, wouldn't they, in those shadows? Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, I'll begin to explore that. And again, it's just building up, you know, big to small, dark. Now I'm going to light. You know, and I skipped ahead, right? I went to my lightest light in the trees right away, but that helps me to judge it. And then the poplar trees would be quite bright. Um, <clears throat> Michael, do you consider that a high key painting because of all the bright uh, sunlight? High key is light, low key is darker? Yeah, but it's gonna have some dark, dark. So this one is you know, showing almost the full spectrum of color. Or, or values, sorry, values. Um, you know, it's gonna have, my blacks are about as black as I could make my paint in the base shadows of those foreground bushes. And my uh, sky color is really quite light right now. Um, it's not white, but it's quite light. Um, so I bet you I've got, if one is white, I've got about a level two all the way to a 10. So it's a full, value painting or a full key you know it's all of it i'm playing the whole entire piano so key is a value statement high generally key. yeah you'd say yeah high key low key would be you know a bright painting or a dark painting okay thank you when yeah. will you go when will you go back in and and um and work on this some more how soon oh instantly because it's nice oh. and wet so i want to use I just need to take a little break. Uh, I, I tried lifting weights for the first time of, since COVID yesterday. <laughs> oh no. Um, so I'll go stretch that out a little bit. And um, 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 yeah, I need to get back while it's wet because I, you know, I'm using those sky colors to carve out those tree shapes. So I'll do that. Uh, at least get the carve out done because again, I can bring the trees back on top. So maybe I should kind of over carve with the knowledge that I'll bring branches and leaves and whatnot over the top again. You can really see the reference to the left of it, how spindly 
that is and i find that to be more interesting but i don't want so 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 much you know it's just not my style is to make teeny 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 tiny details so anyways things to think about thank you guys very much um any questions before we part ways homework wise it's do what you you know if you need to do catch up a little bit or need to work on but it's how do we, you know, you, how do we put into use what we've learned the last three weeks um, and have fun and experiment. And uh, that's the way we'll lock in some of these lessons and then we'll move forward with a couple more lessons and then we'll get to the final big project. So I'm excited for you guys. I'm excited for all of us. Thank you, Michael. Thank all you, right. Michael. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, guys. Thank you Michael. Thank you. Thanks, Michael. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> bye bye. Michael, real yeah. quick, uh, would you be able to give feedback on some of the work we've done last week or just over over the Facebook? Whoever has been able to post. Uh, let's. Can you give me a five minute break and then I'll come back and uh, I'll I mean, do... not right now. You can do it offline. I was just saying. Well, I don't mind doing it right now. I just need to go get another drink. I... Oh, okay. Yeah, if 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 you're okay with that. I... I am totally fine with that. Do you see me now? Yes, I do. Great. I don't see you for some reason. Uh, my 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 video, my camera doesn't work on my computer, so. Uh -huh. um, okay. Yeah. Great. I need uh -huh. to get that fixed. It's been broken for a while. Yeah, just give me a five minute break. Um, okay. And then I will come back and do a quick critique on a couple or, you know, feedback. And uh, trying to find our class. There it is. All right. So are you now seeing the our classroom? Yes. Okay. Yes. Man, so much good work. You guys are amazing. All right, I'll be right back. from Wisconsin. Question. Last week. All right. Couple of you guys. And do you recognize your picture on there? Um, I posted it yesterday. Would be towards the top then. Uh, how do I see it? Why am I not seeing it here? Yeah, it's I see it now. It's the it's right there, center of your screen towards yeah, that one. Yep. Okay, yeah, look at that. So, tonalist painting, it's been a challenge for me to get that fog and just the blurred yeah, you know, blurred trees in the back. And so this one was it was a challenge. I just want I really wanted some feedback on this. Great. Yeah, I mean, nice job letting your colors get more diffused as you go back. Um, you know, this gray one here appears a little like a, a hole. Okay. 
wants to relate to those a little bit more. Um, and then this is a pretty big jump right here between these two. Okay. Um, either, you know, this one gets a little darker or this one gets a little lighter, possibly. Uh -huh. Or, I mean, those trees could be back, but then maybe the size gets a little bit smaller so that it relates because it's very close to this back here. Um, yeah, nice. And then, okay, so the color yellow is the first color that falls out of the color spectrum generally as we recede back into atmospheric space. So you have that, you have your little bit of yellow, the greens are greener up here. And then as we recede back into space, your red falls out. So things can get bluer and cooler if you want. Is this a cool day or a warmer overcast? I think it's a, it's a really foggy, Portland foggy type day, you know. It's okay. one of those days when we have. So you it's a picture I, I picked up from the internet. So it's not, I don't know where it was shot. But um, somehow it feels like a Portland foggy day. Great. So then you may want to, these are still quite warm. You can feel the reds coming through in them. Uh -huh. And this dark is still quite warm. So you may want to cool them down, meaning go towards the bluey grays a little bit versus just okay. values. I think if we turn this into a black and white, um, it would read pretty well. But if you want to use the temperature a little bit it's gonna these can read a little bit cooler okay um yeah that's the only part is right here that's such a big jump and so by cooler you're think i'm think so you're saying something along the lines of paints gray lightened you know lightened with white would that make it yeah paints gray is fine um I'm thinking towards the blues, yeah. Okay, because yeah. I, what I had underneath was I did the the warm, uh, transparent earth, uh, earth red uh, yeah. as a, as my underpainting. You know the underpainting, and I think that's why that red is showing up. Absolutely. Yep. So um, yeah, so work. then I'm trying to cool so, it down basically. That can work, like I did today with a warm fog, right? Yeah but yours is a cool fog. So you may want to cool down, you know, the fog is thicker back there. So again, remember what I talked about gossamer sheets, mm -hmm. thin transparent layers. So if it's a very cool, bluey, gray, you know, lighter sky, then imagine, you know, 20 sheets of that between here and there, this tree way back there. And, you know, this one comes forward quite a bit. That's a big distance jump. From here to here uh -huh. so maybe it's 10 sheets of the blue gray cool gossamer sheets in between there and then you come up to here and maybe it's five right okay. and they're still mm -hmm. being affected by that cool blue light and these trees aren't in fact red and then you know here maybe it's three here maybe mm -hmm. it's one and then up here, it's none. OK, got it. Yeah, nice, okay. nice movement, nice motion. Um, so this is really centered. Let me find the uh, me one half second. All right, so you're seeing your picture on Photoshop here? Yeah.
So I'm going to do a uh, view ruler. So it's 13 by 13 almost, or yeah, 13 by 13 basically. So half of that is seven and a half. So go to there, going, there's my line. Half of that is seven and a half. And there's my line. So yeah, that this is the center. It does look right. Of the painting. It doesn't Should look like the six. right edges. All yes, I was going to say six and a half and six and a half for 13. Thank you. I don't know what I was doing. Yeah, you're right. Thank you. Six and a half. So it's going to be even. I don't know what I was doing. Yeah, six and a half, six and a half. So this is a center of our painting right there. So it's not your lands, your horizon lines a little bit lower, but you know, it's still quite centered. Um, I think if we, did something like that, that may be a little more interesting. Mm. Um, a little bit more, you know what I mean? So it's not so, so balanced. Um, I do know. Did you crop the right hand side? How? What did you? Sorry, I didn't quite follow what happened there. Oh, yeah. So I just chose, let's just do a 12 by 12. So it's a 13 by 13. Let's just do a 12 by 12. So I made a square that's 12 by 12. Uh huh. And you just cropped it basically. Yeah, I could have gone, oops. But I can't do it with that tool. Nope, can't do it with that tool. Anyways, I just kind of chose a crop, whichever way I could have gone. Um, you know, lower showed more water, more sky, whichever it was, but I was just more curious about the sides and not having them be so equal. Um, okay. Yeah, it is It is a 12 by 12 wood panel that okay. I've done this on. So it is a square, square painting. Yeah. Uh, but you're suggesting to, to off-center it a little bit. I, I generally do, yeah. Right okay. up the hike like that, right up the middle. Um, mm -hmm. it flat, it just takes away some of the energy. Um, I'm glad to see that your horizon line in my initial, uh, 15 inch measurement somehow, um, you know, I thought your horizon, I thought it was like really centered. Um, so yeah, and your focal point is here. Um, just change the size real quick to 12. So now it's a 12 by 12. So there you can see the six by six is right in the middle. Um, so let's just make it pretend that it was a 10 by 10 so I can actually really take off quite a bit of it. And I could say, okay, do I want more sky? Is that what it's about? Or do I want more water? And that's what it's about. And now we just move my tool around. You can see my little marching um, ants. Mm -hmm. You know, what if I made it more about the water? So if that's, what size is that? It's 10 by 10. I, I don't know how to get rid of those. So now my five inch is there. My five inch is there. So I didn't help our horizon line at all. I should probably went with the trees and less water. So let's do that, control Z. Anyways, that's just a design issue. Um, I think that, uh, I'm not able to go to right back to where I started it. Anyways, um, let's take it to image adjust and desaturate. So there it is as a black and white. And so you can see how having this dark line right here mm -hmm. makes for a big jump here. And you can see how having this little tree here being the same value and even the same color as these ones in the fog back here. If you squint your eyes, it feels like almost like that could be a hole in this tree, in mm -hmm. this dark tree, getting us to back there. So those are some tests I'll do. A lot of times I'll just shoot a photo 
with my phone and just turn it to a black and white or shoot a black and white photo or even look through my camera with the black and white setting on mm -hmm. is a good way to test. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm not, not, I mean, given, I don't know if I can change the, the center um, no, no, I wouldn't. that no. much, yeah. <laughs> but I can definitely play with the, with the values a little bit more. And Absolutely. That, Absolutely. That change I can definitely do. Okay, great. Thank you so much for your feedback. Appreciate no you taking the time. No problem. And all right. Either any of you really curious? Michael, yep. can you just critique one of mine? Of course. Thank you. And it was um, very, okay, there it is. <laughs> You're pointing to it. Oh, the rocks? No, the one next to it, the one next to it. Oh, that's God. so pretty. No kidding. Oh. Uh, my daughter took a picture and it was a sunny picture of she went to Newport and I I don't know if I translated it into a foggy foggy picture properly. Yeah, it's really interesting. It really reminds me of a Whistler painting. I think we looked at some of his last week where you know it just so the values are really close, the brushwork's really loose. Um, it's interesting, it does look like the cloud is kind of hugging this. Right, yes, you're right, that's not good. Hello. Did, did we lose you? Hello, Michael. We don't hear you, Michael. He's frozen. Even he's yeah, not. His, his I think is frozen. frozen. Yeah. Nope, he's gone. He's gone. He's he's offline. Well, so what would you do then? Just brush that over a little bit? I guess something was bothering me about it, and that was probably it. I just didn't recognize it. Um, it just that's why I wanted him to look at it. It I knew there was something really, really off with it. So <laughs> thank you. Yeah, I guess I would just brush over it a little bit. I just don't know if I went overboard, but Kate? it was a party. Oh, I was just saying, Kate, Kathleen might have some ideas. That's what I would do. I would just brush over. And like he said, you can take a Q-tip then and go back over your, your bridge lines to bring them well, back out. You know what I did, Kathleen? Originally, I actually swooshed over the bridge while it was still a little wet ah. and that's what I really liked about it but when my daughter came in she said ma <laughs> I can't <laughs> see the bridge <laughs> so then I, I went over it again a little bit but you're right maybe that's what I'll do yeah. thank you you have so much experience your work is so beautiful oh well thank you I, ag I agree yes. right yeah, well, it's the year and a half with Michael that has really made the difference. So, oh, my God. Yeah, you're amazing. Oh, thank you. Is he back? Looks like he's back. Well, he Is was. Now you're the host. I, now. now I'm the host. Yeah. Okay, let's <laughs> see your photos. No, I'm just teasing. <laughs> uh, All right, I guess. Is that it? Is he trying to come back? Do you I think? think he's trying because I just saw his photo and it said okay. OSA instructor and it still says so. it's recording. Oh, oh, uh oh, oh, <laughs> we're going to be famous. <laughs> oh, dear. Let's not say anything Michael wouldn't want to hear. <laughs> That's for sure. Well, I don't think I ever would. No, I'm joking. So good. 
He's such a great instructor, isn't he? Oh my goodness. And you know, how, how long have both of you been painting? I started about five years ago. And I, my first instructor instructed us to paint the furthest thing away first. And so you always started with the sky and then you move forward and you just paint it over, you know, because I only took once a week and I was afraid to paint in between. I, uh, I, you know, was pretty set up and dry because I think I used a lot of liquid. And then by the next time you were able to paint like the mountain in front of the sky, and then you were able to paint the trees the next weekend in front of the mountain, et cetera, et cetera. And then uh, I moved and I went back to work and I, uh, you know, uh, took from Michael once at just one session at OSA, but I hated the drive in because I live on the far side of Oregon City and the traffic was horrible. And then he wasn't sure he was going to do it again. And so he suggested that I take from Jennifer Deal. So I took from her for two years. And she's a fantastic artist, but not the instructor that Michael is, because he explains everything. I think what she does is just superb. But if, you, if she doesn't tell you how she did it, then it's kind of hard to copy. And we all worked on something different. And we all just kind of did our own thing. And she would come around and critique and say, no, that's not working. And here's what you do. But if you did something right, you didn't know how you did something right. So I just really didn't learn as fast. And so then when I saw Michael was going to be online and I didn't have to go into Portland, I thought, yay. <laughs> so I'm really happy to do this. So, and I think I've grown. Let's see, I took I've, this is the third class I think I've taken from him, the third one on, on Zoom. I missed the first one, the design and, and whatever. But I think this is my third, I think. So yeah, I, I just love him. I think he's oh. so honest. Oh, and yes. He really tries to teach you what he knows. Oh, yeah. He doesn't hide anything, does no. he? No. And, and, yeah. I just feel I started with watercolor, actually. I, I'm oh, not, no. I'm doing, <laughs> I did botanical <laughs> art, <laughs> very yeah. fun details three years ago. It was actually mm -hmm. a therapy after my recurrent um, uh, breast cancer. And I just oh, needed no. something to take my mind off of things. And so I started the watercolor and I, I happened to see... I, some of my paintings. Oh, yes, yes. yay. Yeah. <laughs> we just we, we recorded without you. <laughs> yeah. You're going to erase it. <laughs> That's all right. We'll see what happens. Yeah. Um, <laughs> let's go back to share screen. All right. There we go. We're back, right? Right. <laughs> so, yeah, beautiful. Um, yeah, the only thing, and, and it could, I mean, I've seen where the fog will grab the buildings or, you know, the, you know, a cloud or whatever as it goes through, but it does feel like there's something kind of enveloping it a little bit more. So yeah. it maybe made the light feel like it's kind of a little more even. That's the only thing. And then it might be fun to throw a couple lights on it. Oh. Michael, would you suggest that I lighten it more evenly or I darken it more evenly? Uh, probably lighten it just a touch more. Okay. Okay. That'll be easier for you. And then, yeah, I heard as my internet was cutting out um, that you could, you know, kind of bring back some of these shapes, a little bit of a Q-tip. Just make sure you're not getting a real obvious Q-tip mark left there. You know, I will often do the Q-tip and then take my brush and just soften the edges, make them a little more interesting. Um, it's very beautiful. It's a profound piece. Um, well, thank you, Michael. That means so much to me. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah, it's very I, nice. I, I use painting as, as kind of therapy. So I, I'm trying to really reach my soul when, when I paint. Um, so thank you so much. That's what I, I, was, I was intending to do. I appreciate your comment. Uh, yeah, yeah, really, really nice. Um, <clears throat> bring it over here real quick. Let's just see what happens. 
Well, that is it always want to do that one. <laughs> um, student work. All right, we've got it up on the screen. You guys can see it on my Photoshop. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Let's just see what happens. I make it pink. Yeah, I think the lights are, you know, fog lights are often. The mobby. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> yeah, because the light refracts off the particles of uh, water. Well, and oh. smog, smog too, can often be pink. Yes, yes, unfortunately. <laughs> oh, he's adding some little. Yes. Things. Yeah. <laughs> I actually like the pink, Michael. Yeah, it's really cool. And I, you know, and I don't quite know what color it would be, or if it is there. If is there a color? Um, for sure, but. Uh, And then this will be a little bit brutish, so kind of ignore the heavy handedness of it. Oh, yeah, I see what you mean. Mm -hmm. Yes. And again, this is kind of getting a little bit on the extreme side, but. Right, no, no, but I see, I see what you're doing. Um, yeah. I get, no, I. A little idea to see if that adds any interest or, where'd my mouse go there? Yeah, what do you think if the pink is more muted? I'm afraid it might be, do you think it's, or like a grayer, a grayer pink rather than so yeah, it's just Slightly lighter is all. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, and again, this is, I mean, I, I, that starts to lose some of your magic that you already have. So, you know, right. whether or not I, I tell you to do it, it's just, you know, I, you just, it's fun to oh. test it, but it's easier for me to test it on here than it is for you on your beautiful painting. So right. sometimes I'm just like, well, you know, it's beautiful. Leave it alone. You, you're learning so much from it and it's working. Um, why, why am I telling you to risk messing it up at all? Um, all right. But I see where you're heading with that. So I think Maybe I wouldn't put as much in, but um, yeah, maybe little... put none in. <laughs> no, 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 no. Because th there was something bothering me about it, and that's why I, I really am happy that you're critiquing it. Thank you. Absolutely. Uh, thank you so much. I'm learning so much from you, Michael. I I don't oil paint. This is. <laughs> So new to me so no, it looks like you had a good time learning. thank you you're wonderful absolutely absolutely all right either of uh, michelle or kate you guys want me to answer any quick questions at all or yeah i'd love to have a critique all right where are we at i was one of the first i think to put it in so it's probably at the bottom Okay. Yeah, you're so fast. And <laughs> <laughs> find our oh, there it is. All right, back. All right, so there's last week's thing. Man, so much nice work, you guys. There it is. 
It's to your pointers almost on it to the left. Oh yeah, yeah. Purpley one. Oh, I love it. Yeah, it's really nice. Are you gonna color this one or what's your thoughts? Well, I actually started with the subtractive and it morphed into this. And mm -hmm. this is thicker paint than I think I've ever used in my life. And I, I got away from my actual source and I just kind of let my imagination grow. <laughs> so, so I don't know if I was going to add colors, um, what would I do? Would I make that less purple and a little bit more blue green in areas or what would I do? I don't know. Okay. That's, that's why I'm asking. Yep. I'm going to do stop share and share screen and let's go back to Photoshop one more time. So there it is, view full screen. Okay, <clears throat> so now let's see what happens when I go to black and white. What, what's gonna happen is whole portions of your trees are gonna disappear. Hmm. Right, because of how you have the light hitting them. Uh-huh. And this cursor's not showing up very well. Because of how you have the light hitting them, they're appearing as light as anything else in the painting, as the sky, as the almost as the light source itself. Okay. So let's oops. I wanna go oh, well, we can do it from here. I'm going to do a duplicate la layer. I'm going to darken it. Oh, wow. Wow. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and erase it so that we're seeing the layer underneath where I erase. Photoshop's fantastic. <laughs> pretty fun for doing stuff like this for sure yeah it'd probably take me five years to learn it <laughs> me too well yeah and it's all so much different now this again is just this i mean it's pretty much the same version i used in college 20 years ago I just never update it well now it won't let me anymore so now i'm terrified it wasn't working the other day i'm like oh they finally found me and took my <laughs> took my uh Huh. And I don't know what your background shapes were really, but if you even had. Well, I just had some trees poking up through the fog. Let's make them shorter. Hmm. Okay, but you can see now <laughs> these trees, these pine trees still have light hitting them. Uh huh. But it's much lighter. Hmm. Okay. I mean, it's much darker, so it doesn't have that same. Um, doesn't have the same. Um, the lights aren't as light. You know, no matter what, you know, pine trees can be a little bit bright, but they're not. You know, when they're getting hit, I could lighten up a little bit if I wanted, but I don't want them as light as the uh, background. Okay. Or, okay. You know, or as the light source, because they're a dark thing. So even when you shine a bright light on a dark thing, it's still got its, you know, it's still got its color. I know that they are a little bit shiny and a little bit waxy leafed, but but not as shiny as you made them. So all you have to do is go in and darken them, put a glaze of darker color over the top, a blue or whatever else, you know, if you want it to be a nocturne. Uh -huh. um, let's merge these layers. Let's um, adjust color balance. So let's say your highlights, I'm going to take towards red and warm them up a little bit, yellow. 
mid-tones, I'm going to go towards uh, purples. And shadows, I'm going to go towards blue. That is a really cool tool. Oh. Wow, that's un unbelievable. Amazing. So you see how your ground feels so much more grounded? Uh-huh. I do. Um, I already merged the layers, but let's, I don't know if it'll let me, no, nope, it won't let me bring it in. I just got to save this as a dark version, and then we can put them side by side. So new version, old version. So yours does look foggier and stuff, but I still like if I wanted it to not be this dark. Right? I can, you know, make it look like it's in a little more fog. Mm -hmm. But my brights are still not as bright as you've got going on over. Okay. Here. Does that make sense? Yeah, it if does. It frost co covered or snow covered yeah you can go crazy you know what i mean with the reflections right. and i am thinking that that's moonlit right my i feeling of it um yeah that's it that's the main thing it's just i felt like your highlights on your trees and bushes are just a literally uh, a little bit overly bright okay all righty and which is easy just come in and glaze in whatever color you want or you could glaze the whole thing blue to make it more of a nocturne and then come back in with your paper towels and lightly wipe those away um and then you know we'll wipe, wipe away around your moon okay and that should do it you saw okay. the, the whole sky back to make the whole sky a little bit lighter um even though it's nighttime you're you know a lot of times the sky is still not especially on a full moon is probably not going to be darker than any of your darks down here. Okay. Okay, thank you. Ah, uh, pleasure. Michelle, are you still wanting this? I'm gonna crush just, you. Just take a quick peek at my, uh, it was, it's just for fun. And Perfect. it's the one that is a hunting scene that my husband came back from hunting. And uh, it's a little, the little five by seven, it's on the square. It, it was from the black and white squares that we did. Right. Um, and, you know, I mean, I'm still so much a beginner, but I'm, I'm learning and having fun and um, yeah. Right over there. Yep. Very cool. Yeah. Oh, that is cool. Very nice. Mm -hmm. The dog, the dog is too um, chunky. I, I had a really hard time trying to, but you know, I could go back and try to do something different, but make him less what you do is you just take this color and come back in and carve those shapes kind of like what i'm doing in the tree right now those spindly trees is i'm using the background color to give it um, a lot of times it's hard to make little tiny shapes but it's easier to make those shapes small by coming back in mm -hmm. um, otherwise maybe you get rid of the dog because yeah the dog looks really out of place and a <laughs> looks little, like a bear a little stuck <laughs> what, um, well michelle you what did they're you hunting? Yeah. What did you paint that on? It's it's actually a board um, that I just had and I did a quick gesso over the whole thing. And um, so I wasn't really worried about, you know, it being it's it was one of those experimental things. OK, but I had fun with it. Yeah. And look at your lighting. You did a three quarter uh, lit view, you know, from back over my left shoulder again. Um, yeah, I love the shadows. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's really nice. I mean, it really. I feel like you should do this one again. Do it uh, proper. Okay. I think there's yeah. something here for sure, and it, you know the fact that it's of your family is always nice. Um, you know, and I like this big lead in. Like, nor you know, a lot of times I'm skeptical of that. People, you know, are just not thinking to edit. Um, but I think this actually works. And it's kind of fun that they're, you know, off to the edge and they're, you know, it looks like they're going back into these trees, right? Right. 
Um, yeah, which is, you know, tough. Normally you would want whatever direction they're facing. Right. More open, but it works here. You're, you're breaking a lot of, you know, kind of rough guidelines, but it works. I like it. Thanks. It, it, it makes me feel that I, I'm right there on the field with them. Mm -hmm. That's the feeling you get. Right. Thank you. Are they duck hunting or what are they doing? Pheasant. Pheasant. Okay. Yeah, I guess that makes more sense. Um, <laughs> very cool. Thank you. Mm. Yeah, I'm really trying to see anything that's glaringly off, but I, I, I mean, you got some nice subtle lines. You got up here, you've got the hill really falling back. These trees, you know, like this dark here definitely wants to pull forward and maybe the dark here wants to pull forward a little bit, but it's not a bad, it doesn't bother me. And uh, in the photo, the, the left horizon line um, actually was angled and yeah, it, it appears that they're going up a hill and you see that all the time with fields on hills so yeah no I, I think that helps I think it all has these nice lines that are leading us in I agree you know, this shape and see this shape and yeah it works mm -hmm. definitely grass without painting every blade Yes, yes, right. Very nicely played on that. And that's, that's really important. Um, yeah, keep your focus in the focus area. Just tell us enough here to let us know what's going on. But uh, well played. I love it. And I have too much to say. And I don't even have time to take, take it into Photoshop except for your dog. <laughs> Maybe I'll just take him to the trimmer instead. It looks like a puffy poodle. <laughs> uh. All right. Well, I wish I had, you know, opportunity. Just who knew that a three hour class would be too short, but you guys have all done. So, I mean, I just see so much goodness going on here. Uh, it was just lovely. Um, so hopefully I don't hurt people's feelings by not talking about everything. And oh, no. but you guys are doing a great job of uh, giving feedback to each other, learning from each other and everything else. So we'll just keep that going. And, uh, Thank goodness we got eight weeks, you know, throughout all of it, we'll at least get opportunities to touch base on a lot of different stuff. So you guys are awesome. I appreciate it. Thanks for letting thank me. You, thank you, Michael. Thank you so much, Michael. Michael. Thank you. You're so kind. Thank uh, you. Absolutely. Thank, thank you. you. I really appreciate all your hard work. Bye. Take care. Have a great week. I'll see you guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. In 20 day hours or whatever. So six, six days, seven, 20 hours. All right, I'm all alone. Talking to myself. I'm going to have to edit this out. Later. <laughs>